Hi everyone, I'd like to show you the new GIS or shapefile export feature in Microsurvey CAD 2021. Uh, first of all, I'm going to import a DBX project here. That's a Leica DBX. And we'll skip the point cloud because that doesn't go through into the shapefile anyway. So now you can see the uh, the DBX project has been brought in, complete with line work from the field and everything. Uh, we've got some curves, we've got some trees, we've got some center lines, other road lines, and that sort of stuff. Uh, there is some attributed information in here. Uh, if I make sure my grips are off, I can click on this tree point here, and it has some additional uh, attribute information with it. Uh, you can see here we've got a height and a type for this tree and actually one of the improvements we've made for uh, Microsurvey CAD 2021 is we've made this dialog resizable. Uh, so if you have any long attribute values or a lot of attribute values you can resize it and uh, there's actually a scroll bars in here too. I'll just shrink it up so you can kind of see that. But Those are now in there so if you've got any uh, oversize or uh, lots of attributes, you can see them. Um, I'll illust illustrate one of the other features that we've done here first. Um, I've got the uh, the export attribute table button here too. Uh, this is a new feature for this version as well. And what that's gonna do is it's going to uh, take every point in the project and, uh, or sorry, uh, every point or a selection of points and uh, and export any attributes available with them as well. Uh, so I can just manually select points here now if I like, or I can type all and it'll select everything. I'm gonna set a name for it. And now it's gonna ask me if I wanna open that up and I'll click yes. give it a second to open here. And what you can see here is that it has exported the northing easting elevation, latitude, longitude, and description, and any attributes available from the points that uh, I selected, which was all points. Uh, so as far as this project is concerned, there are only trees with attributes in this project. So we only got the tree attribute values here. Um, if there were other points with attributes in this project, they would just carry on uh, filling out columns here so that we could look at the attributes there. Um, so something you can do here to easily review them, you can freeze the top row and you can actually freeze the, uh, the left column as well if you need to scroll over and look at attributes. Um, but this will allow me to scroll through and find the trees that have those attributes of, um, set for them. So this one here has just a height of two set and here's that other one that I was looking at before that has the height and the type. So um, that's just a useful way to look at uh, the various attributes for points in your project and review them. Um, maybe you're looking for a specific value or something like that. You can use Excel to sort them out in that way. So moving along here, um, I'll show you the shapefile export now. Um, what I can do now is I'll click on that or GIS export is the command. Uh, same thing, we can select entities. I can just pick one of them or whatever. I'll do that now. Um, but we've also got a couple of buttons on the dialog here. So I can select objects and I can manually select certain things that I'd like. Or I can select all. So now that's done, I'm gonna click browse. And what I'm going to recommend is that you create a folder. Um, as far as shape file rules go, um, sorry, shape files um, can only contain one set of attribute values. Uh, so what we've done is any points that have a description uh, will create their own shape file. So then you may have attributes set to a point based on its description.
Um, so for a tree, we've got the height and type and diameter and, and that sort of thing. But maybe for a manhole, you've got a, a depth or an elevation value or a type set or whatever. And so that just serves to keep them all separate for you. Um, so when we export, we don't make you pick specific objects, um, like only lines um, or only polylines, polygons, or points. That's that's the object types that are supported in shape files. So the points, polygons, and polylines. Anything that you select will be converted into one of those three types. Um, we do support exporting uh, GIS objects. So if you've imported another shape file or a... Uh, a KML file or something like that, uh, you can export that to a shapefile this way. Uh, we support Field Genius attributes. Um, so if you've done a project in Field Genius and stored GIS attributes for it, same as I've done with this Leica DBX, you can do the same thing. Um, and we export CAD objects as well. So any CAD objects that you've got in there, so that'd be lines, polylines, 3D polylines, you name it. Um, we've tried to support as much as possible in there, and those will be filtered out into various um, shapefile files and object types. So circles will be stored as polygons because there is no circle or arc object type within shapefiles. Um, arcs will be stored as polylines because they're not closed. Um, closed polylines will be stored as polygons and, and so on. For arcs and circles, um, you'll need to pay attention to the curve resolution here. This is set at uh, 0.1 meters or a deck for uh, metric projects, and it's set at 0.25 feet or a quarter of a foot for imperial projects. It's really just a number to tell you um, how far the vertices will be apart on those objects when you export them, and uh, and changing this resolution can help to uh, to change the size of your shapefile if you've got a lot of curved objects in there. Um, hatches will be exported as polygons if you so choose. Uh, you can choose to export the pol the uh, shapefile as 2D or 3D by checking or unchecking this box here, and you can choose to write out the uh, coordinate system information in a PRJ file with the shape file by checking or unchecking this box here. Um, the PRJ file is optional. It does not need to be included with the shape file. So if you're importing into a project where you already have a, uh, a coordinate system set up or something like that, you don't need to do that. Uh, you can click on the help for more information if you like. I'm going to click on export here. And so now that file has been created um, where I specified there. Sorry, I'll just open it up. Okay, so here is our shapefile export. As you can see, as I described before, um, these are all descriptions from the points. So we've got benchmark, building, centerline, fence, footpath, and so on. Um, but we also have some generic shape files here as well. And these will be created for the CAD objects. Um, and so we're going to have points, polylines, and I didn't have any polygons in here, if you remember, but there would be a polygons shape file as well for any CAD objects um, that would be converted to a polygon. Uh, we do our best to filter these out into the appropriate shape files, um, splitting up anything that's necessary. So hopefully we shouldn't have any issues with that. We we do try and pay close attention to it. Um, but now these are able to be re-imported into Microsurvey CAD or another um, another program. So I'll just show you that here with uh, Google Earth. So. Here, I'm back here, and just to emphasize it, I will grab the shape file. the The set of four files here is considered the shape file, not just the SHP. And we can drag that into Google Earth. You can set a style template uh, to set a color or something. I'm gonna save it though. And so you can see now that uh, that, that file has been brought in in the correct location. And uh, I'll do the same thing over in QGIS as well so you can see it. I'll grab that. And I believe I can actually do this with all of them. Yes. And bring in some back 
background imagery so you can see the same thing. There we go. So you can see all of those points and lines and everything have been brought in. Here's the tree that I was looking at before. Let's grab some information on that one. Oops. And we can see the values there. Um, you'll also see that we have exported out some survey type values with this. Uh, any points that you export are going to have um, the point ID, description, northing, easting, elevation, latitude, longitude, all uh, associated with them if they are available. Um, and then what's exported with any other type. So this is just the CAD line work now and uh, and that sort of thing, any CAD points and, and whatever. They're going to have a CAD handle um, that you can find by listing that object in your project. And then they're going to have a CAD layer associated with them as well. So because this was created from the curb points using the automap system in uh, Microsurvey CAD, the, the, la the layers were automatically stored as line-curb. Um, so you'd be able to trace them back through the project that way. So if you have any uh, submission requirements in your jurisdiction for uh, shapefiles, uh, that's becoming increasingly common. Um, or if you work with a, uh, a GIS department at your company, that's another common one. Uh, this is a good way to get uh, smart or attributed data back and forth from Microsurvey CAD using DBX projects or uh, Field Genius projects or, or whatever you like. So thank you for watching.